you're watching Swipe, coming up on this week's show. We go behind the scenes at the research labs belonging to one of the biggest tech firms in the world. Meanwhile, I find out what I'll look like aged 80 using biometric technology. And we fight for honor in our game's preview. Welcome to Swipe from IBM's research labs. In a moment, I'll be trialing a project here which will visibly transform me into an elderly lady for good reason. But before then, Will has been acting like a Jedi Knight, trying to control things with his mind. You've got to see this. Behind the doors of this 18th century mansion, a team of scientists is working on cutting edge research. Pursley House in Hampshire has been home to IBM's development labs since 1958. Today, around 2,000 people work here, and one of their latest innovations is this, a system that allows users to move objects with their mind. It's been set up to control a toy BB-8 droid from the latest Star Wars film. We're listening and recording to the brain, and we're thinking a very specific signal. Um, you know, thinking about lifting something or pushing something or even thinking about eating a cheeseburger. As long as when we put the um, system into a listen mode and we think the same thought, the headset will recognise that, the code recognises that, and then we're able to publish that off to IBM's cloud platform. The headset measures the wearer's brain activity, but it's the software behind it which plays the uh, crucial role. Bluetooth now. connects the hardware, and IBM's Bluemix cloud platform turns this into a message for BB-8. Using the system to control a toy is a fun way of showing it off, but the applications for connected technology could be wide-ranging. If you look at the advancement of connected cars, look at the advancements of how you can remotely control aircraft, and also how we can better you know, well-being, you see lots of energy, energy management systems now for monitoring your house. So I think we're just starting to tap the surface of the potential there. This project wouldn't work without the Internet of Things. By combining devices, in this case the headset and the droid, we can make existing technology smarter and developers can start pushing the boundaries of what might be possible. How about this dream scenario? We're nearly at the stage where this technology can be used to understand if I've had a good day or a bad day at work and I'm driving home using GPS and my house recognises that I've had a good day and maybe doesn't do anything but it recognises sometimes I've had a bad day and maybe pours me a glass of wine. The Star Wars universe hasn't become reality yet but the research going on here certainly has the potential to help us do things differently in our own world. Will Sargent, Sky News. Stay with us. Still to come, I'll be getting a glimpse into the future when I let a computer age me by 48 years. That's coming right up after a roundup of this week's tech news. Take a look at the world's biggest rocket being tested by NASA. The organisation used its snappily named High Dynamic Range Stereo X camera to film it. Filming rocket motor tests is usually pretty difficult because of problems with exposure settings, but NASA got around this by recording multiple slow motion video exposures at the same time. If you haven't heard of Pokemon Go yet, then you must have been living in a cave. Nintendo's mobile game is huge and it's been making serious money, more than $200 million in net revenue in its first month, according to number crunchers. Ever wanted a robotic suitcase? Me neither, but now one exists. Kawa Robot R1 follows its owner and can avoid obstacles using sonar and sensors. The robo case can keep up with you if you need to run for your flight too, apparently scooting along at four and a half miles per hour. So far, it's raised more than $200,000 through crowdfunding. And an active volcano known as the Mouth of Hell is being connected to the internet, so Wi-Fi sensors can send alerts if an eruption is imminent. Around 80 sensors are being placed inside Messiah to monitor temperature and pressure. It's one of Nicaragua's most active volcanoes and it last had a major eruption in 2008. Meeting! Protect the pilot. Stick around for our game's preview when we'll be teaming up with Titans. But first. We all have unique characteristics, and some of those have long been used for identification processes like fingerprinting or voice recognition. But what happens when scientists take our facial characteristics to see how we'd age? I'm about to find out what I could look like when I'm 80, and pretty much every age up until then. The system has picked up what your key characteristics are, so it knows where your eyes, nose and mouth are. And when I capture the image, it's going to be processed by a machine learning algorithm. 
Um, this has been trained on a large number of images of people at different ages. So based on this training data and the combination of the characteristics of your face, it's going to work out what you look like at these different ages. I'm ready. I'm okay. a bit scared. All right, here we go. And here goes. Is this what it's like to watch your life flash before your eyes? So you can see at each stage it's processing each of your images. Oh, my eye colour looks like it's changed. 61 to 80, that's not too scary actually. As you've aged more, there's more wrinkles and you can see especially around the nose that you get more, more lines. But how accurate can this be? What about lifestyle factors? What if I started smoking tomorrow or sunbathing every summer day? This is as accurate as the input image that you give it. So if you've already started smoking or you've been in the sun a lot and it shows on your face, the system will pick up these characteristics. But if you haven't, then it's not going to predict whether you know this is what you're going to look like. I find the younger images quite fun. I've actually bought a picture of myself when I was two. Okay, great. So I can show you and we can compare. Yes. Uh, let me get this up. Right, this is, this is me age two. So I'm going to hold it to that one there. Okay, yeah. So you can see that your nose, you've got a smaller nose. I'd say the nose is very similar. And your eyes, they tend to look bigger. Hmm, maybe. What do you reckon? So could this be used to track down missing children after they've grown up? Yeah, so I mean, if you have a picture of them when they're five or ten years old, you can upload this picture to the system and it will work out what they look like in 10 years' time. Uh, another useful um, thing to use it for is the passport office. So every 10 years you have to upload a new picture and it's very difficult for a person to verify whether that is the same person or not. The application is still just a research project for IBM but the company reckons it's more accurate than similar systems out there already. Gaming fans head to Cologne next week for Gamescom, a massive trade fair. So we thought we'd take a look at some of the titles that could make an impact there. Here's Lucy. So one of the games I think is going to make a big splash at this year's Gamescom is For Honor. So this is a brand new title from Ubisoft and they're probably best known for Assassin's Creed, for things like Tom Clancy. This is very, very different for them. It's a world where, for some reason, the samurai, the vikings, and the, the great English knights of old can all meet up and, of course, fight each other. The real cool part of the game comes when you come face to face with another player, because you go into this fighting stance and you, know, you lock onto your target. But what you have to do is you have to really watch how they're behaving, where where they seem to be moving, where they look, where they're going to be attacking from. So For Honor looks really cool, really interesting. Ubisoft are definitely going to be showing it off more. It's out next year on February 14th. Another game which is definitely going to make a big splash of Gamescom is Titanfall 2. Basically, in Titanfall, you play as a pilot. You can free run, you've got a gun, run around, all that kind of stuff. But the real fun begins when you call in your giant mech. Protect the pilot. You can get in and you can drive them around, and they are surprisingly zippy. You know, you'd think they'd be really clunky to walk around, but they're actually a ton of fun. You can jetpack around, you've got a big rocket launcher. Titanfall 2 is going to fix some of the problems, some of the issues that people had with the first game, most notably the fact that the first game was multiplayer only. People really wanted to get into the story of that world, and with Titanfall 2 they can because there will be a single player campaign, which I imagine EA will be showing off before the game launches on October 28th. Scalebound is a brand new game uh, from Microsoft and Platinum Games. Platinum Games have an incredible pedigree, so I'm very excited to see their brand new game. You play as a character named Drew, and he kind of looks a little bit like Prince Joffrey from Game of Thrones, uh, King Joffrey from Game of Thrones even, and he gets transported to this magical world, and of course he has a dragon. He's controlled by artificial intelligence, but you can also tell him sort of where to go. And the two of you fight together, and you have this really strong bond, so if either you or your dragon die, then the other dies. But not only do you have a dragon, you are kind of part dragon yourself. So you have a dragon arm, which is stronger, and you can turn into this sort of dragon form. And that's coming out next year on Xbox One and PC. But now we're taking it. Well, that's it for this week. But don't forget, you can watch any Swipe episode on our YouTube playlist. Just type in Sky News Swipe. 
And you can stay up to date with all the latest tech stories throughout the week on Sky News on mobile, web, tablet, Sky Q and Catch Up. See you again next time. Bye-bye.